you're rolling. Okay, uh, today I would like to talk to you a little bit about creating a uh, black and gray portrait. Very um, basic portrait with um, black only, shading liquid, uh, no whites added to the gray, so it's very, very basic. Uh, it's just used with uh, lining black. The three different kind of shading blacks and then uh, we use a uh, shading solution uh, uh, to make the really light colors uh, happening. As you see in this case um, we have a very simple portrait. It's uh, on a forearm. That's why it comes down together. Uh, it's placed fairly far up front. That's where the wrist is. Um, what I did is in this case is I started to put the stencil on the skin and I did really stay away from mostly line work. So what I did is it's like I made some line work here where I knew I want to be very dark just to hold the piece together and some little line work here. But all on this part where you see there's no line work into it. There's no solid line on the chin. There's no solid line in the middle of the mouth. No solid sli uh, lines by the nose. So what I basically started is when this, where the stencil was placed I started to shade right underneath here and brought the shade in underneath the chin. So instead of creating a line with a liner, I used a 15 Magnum curved so it's soft on the side. And I started to shade right in here and start to layer it in. Um, if you do it very, very soft and surfacey, and uh, uh, you can use almost a lining black to lay the first shade in, but make sure that you almost, think about almost like you take a feather like a, and touch somebody's skin. You don't want to wake him up but you want to make sure that he moves a little bit and you laugh about it. So if you keep that in mind, that's really how I shade it underneath here. So it's like I come in, um, I put the shade in and go soft here, do the same effect here which creates this jawline without a sharp edge. Um, as soon as you use a line underneath here, a solid one, what's going to happen is your tattoo is absolutely going to look like a cartoon. I mean, it's just what it is. Every cartoon has sharps lining in a shading. It doesn't matter what you do, it's never going to look real anymore. Um, if you want to get some good reference, look at uh, Mike DeVries' work, or Mike DeMass' work, or Tom Ramshaw, or Bob Terrell. They're using no lines at all. If they use line works, they use it afterwards when the tattoo is done to create the sharpness of the piece. Um, I did the same effect here. I used the lining black. You see the change in here. That's where I started dipping back and forth between the medium gray, uh, shading gray, and the lining black. And I created that shade in here. It's a little darker one right in here. It goes through here and it goes through here. Uh, how I worked this, I worked my way up from the bottom this way. And I worked it up almost like a copy machine. Think about it's like you have a laser printer and it will go back and forth this way. So I wouldn't go and just start a little bit here in black and a little bit here and a little bit here. I focused on this area and I came up this way. Um, I finished everything I worked on all the time. So you would almost see a stencil from up here going up and down here you would see a jawline done and finished in the tattoo. So if you do that you focus more on a small area and uh, your brain is not seeing the overall picture, it's just focusing on what you're doing. It trains itself to be more accurate in shading. As trying to emulate a picture and say like, oh, I need to get as close as possible, your brain really focuses on that shadow. That's what you really want to do. Over here, I started to come in, there's a very soft shade that creates that highlight. There's no white in there, that's the skin. That's just how the skin is. It looks whiter than it really is. Uh, it's because I used a shading solution to break a light gray wash down to almost nothing. And what it does is like it creates this perfect soft blend into the light spot. Um, I did the same thing coming from the other side. I came from this side where it's darker. I created the medium shading uh, um, gray, went into a light wash, and went then from the light wash I needed to have this soft, really, really soft blend right here and that's achieved with the shading so solution in a perfect way because it's clear. So if you use a clear shading solution what happens is you just have to even use a little color on the needle and you still get a soft blend and that's basically what it does here. Uh, keep in mind that you should stay very, very surfacey. If the tattoo bleeds, it's very, very bad. It's like it pushes the color out, it pushes the pigment out, you know, it looks reddish. You can't see the light shades in the skin. So you're better off uh, being very surfacey, work it.
surfacey. You're better off uh, using it very, very surfacey. First of all, you're not irritating the skin too much. Second of all, you maybe have a second chance if the shadow doesn't look correct. So sometimes we have to cheat. We only have one chance. In this one, you maybe have two. If you're really smart, maybe you have three. So it's it's an it's a it's a huge huge advantage for a tattoo artist to master that surface tattooing, and then uh, basically look at it and say like I like that shadow where it sits now and like support it with all the other shading. So you know don't 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 be afraid to go too soft. Sometimes it's it's better to be too soft than too deep. You know in this case, um, same way up here. I come up here. Uh, to create that hair effect, what I do is I take a 15 Magnum, I turn it sideways, so if it's like this, I put it up and then I start lining it this way. Um, I love to use round 15 curves because it gives me a chance to go in with the needle and come back out with the needle. So uh, if you see a surface like this on the needle, that's the skin. What I like to do is I like to come in and bring it in like almost like this. So it gives me a chance that it's softer here and then I rotate it this way and it comes out this way. So if, if the skin is still here, I would pull it back out in this way. That's the motion, the, the motion what I do. It's really important to do that to get an effect where it comes in. There's no definite start of a line. You don't want to create a hairline and have a lot of people do this and then you do this and the biggest part where you see is that dot. It's a huge no now if you do this with every single. Sometimes in the skin it bleeds out and it goes like this. And you have like some great effects here, you know. If you don't want to donate, like connect dots, then it's not really cool, you know. So try to do it, learn this. It's a very simple technique. Works great if you do it. The skin is getting very, very fine line. It's a single needle. Uh, if you have your magnum stacked, it's going like this. You have two lines at a clip, so you can do hair lines at the same time and then just shade over it very soft and you get that effect like here and little spiky hair what comes out here. Um, I always use some form of back shading. Again, I use a, um, I start out here with maybe a medium gray, medium wash and then break it down to the skin to create that highlight uh, right around the, the face area. Uh, a person who did this very well, Stefan from uh, France, you know, check him out, he does some great stuff, he has those effects, he uses them all over the place, you know. Uh, you never can do too much research on any tattoo artist out there. Um, an old saying in the tattoo industry was like, you know, a great artist, uh, um, you know, creates, but a killer artist steals from the other one. So, steal whatever you can, look at it, figure out how he does it. It only enhances everybody's technique, you know, it only enhances the pieces and, and um, those pieces are going to be the minimum requirement in the next five years, which 20 years ago nobody could do something like that. So it's like, you know, time is moving on, so try to be creative, learn a lot, you know, check everybody's workout, support them, send them some questions and hope we'll get some answers, you know, a lot of people help you, you will see. So. Uh, the next part what I did, I always, always, always do the eyes at the end. Always. It's like, um, if you put the eyes in, in the beginning of the portrait, like I see it sometimes done, you create already a, a look, a feel for the tattoo. If you don't have any eyes in it, I always say it looks like your evil kid. So this is how your kid is for real. It has no eyes, it's evil, it's mean. If they can already understand that all the facial expression and the shades and uh, uh, the expression reflects already their portrait, their loved one, their kid, without the eyes, just in an evil way, you're on a good track. You put the eyes in, that's when you put life into the piece. That's what it is. If you put the eyes in first, everybody focuses on the eyes, you will get lost by the shading. And what's going to happen is, it's like everybody's going to look in this section, the expression. Most of the time, this way, and those little parts here, which make all the portrait. So, if you take this away in the beginning already, where you people focus on the eyes, your brain is not going to focus as hard on the shades and on the, the little muscles in the face everywhere. So, you know, because you have already the look. So, try to stay away from that. Put them in at the end. I found out over my, my years of tattooing that that's the best way to do it. Uh, again, colors used in this tattoo lining black. Gray wash dark, gray wash medium, gray wash light, um, intense mixing solution. That's it. Very simple. 15 Magnum. 
Um, I used a five liner to make those lines. Some of them are done at the end. And uh, that's really it. Very, very soft tissue. Make sure that your tissue you wipe with is always a little moist, a little wet. If you work on somebody for four or five hours with a rough tissue, you're going to tear up the skin tissue. You're going to make it raw. It's going to get reddish. Again, you can't see the shades, not the light ones. So make sure that the customer has a great time and you have a great time by doing it. So let me know what you think. If it helped you, let me know. If it didn't help you, if you have any more questions, just send it to us and uh, we're going to try to get an answer for you. Bye.